My name is Deb Aducci. I'm a physical therapist. Everything that will be talked about today in this video is also described in your total joint binder. I'm first going to give you a quick overview of your hospital stay and then go into more detail regarding all aspects of your physical therapy. You will typically be in the hospital for three days. For example, if you have surgery on Wednesday, you will be discharged home on Saturday. Most of our patients are discharged directly home. However, some require rehab in a skilled nursing facility. Physical therapy will be an important component of your hospital stay. The physical therapist will help you to recover after your total joint replacement and also help determine the most appropriate discharge plan for you. Physical therapy typically begins on post-op day one. The therapist will do their best to see you in the morning that first day after surgery. If the therapist is unable to see you until mid-afternoon, the nurse will be the one to get you up that first morning after surgery. Physical therapy is typically one time a day. Our therapists work four 10-hour days. Therefore, you will likely see more than one physical therapist during your hospital stay. You may also see a PT co-op student who can help you with your exercises and take you for a walk. Your physical therapy sessions are typically 30 to 45 minutes in length. Your first visit will be more lengthy as the physical therapist will perform an initial evaluation. On that first visit, the physical therapist will ask you about your home setup. They'll want to know who you live with, if you have stairs, if you have equipment, and what type of work you do. This will help them determine if you are someone who will be able to go straight home or if you will require a rehab stay before you go home. After the interview, the therapist will look at the strength in your arms and your legs. They will ask about your pain, look at your bandage, and then they will do some exercises in bed. Next, they will help you sit up on the edge of the bed. They will help you get up and take a few steps and sit in the chair next to your bed. Typically, patients sit up for at least an hour that first day. If you're comfortable, you can sit longer. We work very closely with the nurses and nursing assistants. They will also help you get in and out of bed and walking throughout your hospital stay. If you are up to it, the nurse can help you get up again later on that first day after surgery. Your second day of physical therapy is similar. You will continue to do exercises, take a longer walk, and you will be up in the chair two to three times a day rather than once or twice. On post-op day three, the day you will be discharged, you will be out of bed the entire morning preparing for discharge. You will do your exercises, take a longer walk, and learn how to go up and down stairs. Let's get into more detail. First, let's talk about pain, as that is often first and foremost on patients' minds. It is important that you are comfortable. If you are not comfortable, you won't be able to move your new hip and knee, and you won't be able to get up and walk around. There are three things we do to help minimize your pain. The first is pain medication. Typically, the physical therapist will coordinate with your nurse to ensure that you are pre-medicated prior to physical therapy. After agreeing on a time to see you, either the nurse or the physical therapist will communicate this plan with you. This will allow you to prepare yourself for therapy and make sure you've had your pain medication and are comfortable. The second thing we do to help with pain is ice therapy. Nothing fancy, simply putting ice in a plastic baggie. This is typically given to you after therapy. This will help to relieve the pain and also reduce swelling. When you get home, you can also put ice in a baggie. You can use a package of frozen vegetables or you can buy a gel pack, which is available at most pharmacies. We recommend you ice your hip or knee up to 20 minutes. Be certain that there is a barrier, such as a towel, between the ice and your skin. Something to keep in mind. Many of you may now use heat therapy. This is common when you have chronic arthritis. After your surgery, it's important that you don't use heat therapy for at least four weeks. Using heat on your hip or knee right after surgery can increase inflammation and bleeding. So stick to ice therapy for at least the first four weeks. The third thing we use to control pain, and one of the most important from a physical therapy perspective, is relaxation. The more you're able to relax, the less pain you will have. It is a natural reaction to tense up when the physical therapist is bending your new hip or knee. You're lying in bed, physical therapist comes in and says, okay, let's bend your hip and knee. You are thinking, are you crazy? Do you know what I just had done? Right away, you tense up. When you do this, your muscles contract and they pull on your incision. This causes compression at the joint. The pain sensors are located in the joint. When you tighten your muscles, the joint compresses and squeezes the pain sensors, causing pain. The more you can relax your joint and let it bend freely, the less pain you will have. Patients are often unaware that they are tense. If you notice you grabbing the chair or the bed rails when you're bending your joint, we'll say, take your hands off the railing, put your arms across your chest, 
close your eyes, take a deep breath, relax. Right away you should feel less pain. It may take a day or two to come to this realization, but once you do, you'll be much more comfortable. If you have music that helps you relax, please bring that in. If you have a picture of some place that you've been, please bring that in. Whatever it might be, we encourage you to do whatever it takes to be relaxed when you are bending your new knee and hip and moving around. You all have arthritic pain right now. That pain will be gone after surgery. You'll have a new pain, incisional pain, but that will go away and get better every day. Typically the pain will be like a toothache, except for when we are bending your knee and your hip. Every day the pain gets less and less. It is very important that you communicate the level of pain you are having. We need you to be comfortable so that you can bend your new hip and knee and be able to move around. The knee joint tends to get more stiff than the hip joint. And because of that, total knee replacements are generally more painful than total hip replacements. Let me talk a little more about that. The knee is a simple joint. It just bends and straightens. It is a compartmentalized joint. After surgery, your joint will swell as that is part of the natural healing process. When you get swelling around the knee, there is no place for the fluid to go. So it builds pressure in the joint. As we talked about before, the pain receptors are in the joint. So if there's more pressure in the joint, there is pressure on the pain receptors, which causes pain. Also, you can get away without bending your knee. You can sit with your knee straight and walk with your knee straight. If you are not bending your knee naturally, it can get stiff. The hip is different. Once again, you get swelling, but in the hip, there is more room for the swelling. If you bend your hip, the fluid in the joint gets pushed into the pelvic cavity. So there is no pressure buildup. Also, you have to bend your hip to move. You can't sit on the edge of the bed without bending your hip. These are the reasons why knees tend to get more stiff than hips. Early on, the focus of your rehab is getting the flexibility back in your hip and your knee. While you are in the hospital, you will get physical therapy daily until you are discharged home. Once you are home, you will only get therapy three times a week. There are numerous other hours in the week that you are responsible for performing your own therapy. Consider a full-time job for the first four weeks in order to get the flexibility back in your hip and your knee. Everything you do will affect the outcome, how you sit, how you walk, how you sleep. Our job is to teach you how to exercise, how to stretch your hip and knee, but it's up to you to do it. As soon as the surgeon closes up your incision, you start to scar. Bending your hip and knee right away helps the scar to heal in a regular pattern. If you do not move your hip and knee right away, it will scar in an irregular pattern and cause fibrosis and stiffness. You have about four weeks to get the flexibility back in your joint. After four weeks, it is unlikely you will make large gains in range of motion. We hope you will leave the hospital with your hip and knee bending at a 90 degree angle. By the time you finish your physical therapy, patients who have had their hip replaced should be able to bend their hip enough to get their shoes and socks on, and patients who have had their knee replaced should be able to bend it about 110 degrees, which will allow them to go step over step up and down stairs. When you are getting physical therapy at home or in an outpatient setting, the physical therapist should be putting their hands on you and helping you to stretch your hip and your knee. If they are not doing this, then you are not getting good therapy. Ask them to help stretch your hip and your knee. If they are not doing hands-on therapy, then seek another provider. Once again, if you do not get the motion back in these four weeks, it will be very difficult to get it back at all. After being discharged from the hospital, your typical course of physical therapy would be home therapy for three days a week for two to three weeks, followed by outpatient therapy two to three times a week for four to eight weeks. If you have the means to get to outpatient therapy sooner than two to three weeks, I would recommend doing that sooner rather than later. It can be a challenge to do therapy in the home setting. Outpatient settings allow better surfaces on which to exercise and they have more equipment to work with. So let's talk about getting up and moving around. You'll be getting out of bed the first morning after surgery. The first time that you sit up, it's not unusual to feel nauseous or dizzy. The therapist will be taking your blood pressure and your heart rate to make sure that you're ready to get up and moving. Typically we use a walker the first day. It's a little bit easier to use. So we'll bring the walker out in front of you. You're gonna bring your heels behind you as much as you can. Your hands, if you're in a chair, will be in the arms of the chair. If you're on the bed, it will be right on the bed surface itself. You'll bend with your nose over your knees and give a big push up and then grab onto the walker. Okay, go ahead and sit back down. If you're having both of your knees replaced, it will look a little bit different. When you bend, 
because both of your knees have been replaced, it'll be hard to bend your knees, but you'll bend them underneath you as far as you can, which won't be too much. You'll use your hands to push you up a little bit, and then you'll be, bend your knees under you again, and keep pushing up and bending your knees until you're all the way standing. Great. Once you're standing up, it's safe to put pressure into your new total joint. Pressure actually helps bone heal, so it helps the bone heal around the prosthesis. A lot of people think that you're using the walker or the crutches to protect the bone, but you're actually using it to protect the muscle. Most often, prostheses are, are cemented into the bone, or there's a rough surface on the outside that allows bone to easily heal to the prosthesis. Also, patients sometimes think that they cut your muscle when they go to put the prosthesis in your joint, but what they actually do is they split the muscle and they stretch it far apart. If you think about your muscle like a rubber band, when we stretch a rubber band, the rubber band gets weak. So until your muscles have a chance to shorten again, they're going to be weak. Also, swelling is part of the natural healing process. So when there's extra fluid around your muscles, they can't work as efficiently as they do without the fluid. So when you get up that first time, if you were to put full weight into your leg without the use of a walker or crutches, your, leg, your bones would be strong, but your leg would buckle because your muscles are too weak. So once we're up with the walker, you're going to go ahead and pull the walker forward and then your operated leg, put about half your weight into your leg, and then your good leg. Walker, bad leg, push into the walker, good leg. Walker, bad leg, good leg, great. Now you can see that the walker is a little bit limiting. It causes you to walk like this, which is not a natural way to walk. That's why we like you to get to crutches soon after. Crutches allow you to walk more naturally, and they're also easier to use on stairs. Let's do a few more steps. Walker, operated, unoperated. Walker, bad leg, good leg. For those of you who are having both your knees replaced at once, you're going to walk a little bit different with the walker. Your leg, it'll take a few days for your knees to get strong, so we're actually going to have you take very small steps and walk with, with pretty much straight legs. So you'll bring the walker forward first, and then one leg, small step with your leg straight, and then the other one. It doesn't really matter which one you move first, just that you're taking small legs and you're not really bending your knees. And as your muscles get stronger, we'll allow you to bend your knees more and take larger steps. Great. Most patients will begin to use crutches on post-op day two or day three. If you're familiar with crutches, you can use them on the first day after surgery. To use crutches, you're going to put both crutches on, together on either side of the body. You're going to put one hand on the crutches and the other hand on the armrest of the chair. Just like we did with the walker, you're going to pull your heels underneath you, try to bend your knees as much as you can, nose over your knee, and give a walk up. Great. You're going to put one crutch under each arm. The therapist will fit the crutches to make sure they fit you. Typically, they, you need to have three fingers between the armpit and the top of the crutch. You don't want to lean on the crutches on your armpits. There are blood vessels and nerves in there that you can damage. Stand up nice and tall. The weight goes into your hands, just like it did with the walker. So we're going to start the same way we did with the walker. The crutches first, and then your operated leg, and then your unoperated leg. Crutches, bad leg, good leg. And once they have mastered that, then you're going to do the more normal walking pattern. So crutches, operated leg, and then walk through. Crutches, operated leg, and then walk through. If you've had both your knees replaced, when you walk with crutches, it'll be a little bit differently. This allows you to protect both of your knees. So you're going to move your right crutch, left leg, left crutch, right leg. Right crutch, left leg, left crutch, right leg. And when you've mastered that, then you can move your opposite leg and arm together. So right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. Right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. On post-operative day two or three, we will teach you how to use crutches on stairs. We'll teach you both with a railing and without a railing. You'll be on the crutches for some time, so we want to make sure that you know how to use them out in the community, for example, if you have to go up and down a curb. So if, if you have a railing, it's preferable to use a railing, so we'll teach you that way first. So both crutches will go on whatever side the railing is not. And you're going to go up the stairs leading with your good leg. So it's up with the good. And then you're going to put the weight in your good leg in your hands and then bring your bad leg up. You're just going one step at a time. So up with the good leg, bad leg, and then the crutches. Good leg, bad leg, and then the crutches. 
Going up and down stairs without a railing, you use the same sequence. One crutch under each arm. You're going to lead with the good leg. Push on your good leg and your crutches and bring your bad leg up. Up with the good, push on your crutches, up with the bad. Good leg, bad leg, crutches. Good leg, bad leg, crutches. Good leg, bad leg, crutches. The sequence is reversed for descending the stairs. You're going to lead with your crutches, and then your operated leg, and then your unoperated leg. Crutches, bad leg, good leg. Crutches, operated leg, unoperated leg. Crutches, bad leg, good leg. Crutches, bad leg, good leg. And one more step. Crutches, bad leg, good leg. So once again, it's up with the good, down with the bad, good go to heaven, bad go to hell. You guys, most of you are probably going up and down the stairs this way now, one step at a time. If you try to go up the other way, most often it feels unnatural. When going down the stairs without a railing, you'll lead both crutches first, and then your operated leg, and then your unoperated leg. Just takes a little bit more balance. Both crutches first, operated, unoperated. Crutches down, bad leg, good leg. Crutches, bad leg, good leg. Crutches, operated leg, unoperated leg. Crutches, bad leg, good luck. Great. In regards to equipment, if you are being discharged directly home, we can take care of your equipment needs. If you are going to rehab before going home, the rehab will take care of your equipment needs. There is a copay on most equipment, so it is helpful to have credit card information available for the vendor. Also, most insurances only pay for one piece of equipment, so if you happen to need a walker and crutches, you may be asked to pay for one of those items out of pocket. Insurances also only pay for one piece of equipment every five years. So if you have purchased a walker, cane, or crutches in the past five years, you will have to pay out of pocket for any additional equipment. The therapist will find out what you have for equipment at home during their initial evaluation. We typically don't have you bring in equipment like walkers, but we do have you bring in crutches if you have them. We usually have you bring these in on post-up day two or three, so we can make sure that they fit properly and that they are in good working order. It varies widely how long patients have to be on crutches. Some patients will be off crutches as early as two weeks after surgery, others one month. You don't win a prize for getting off crutches early. Everyone comes into surgery under different circumstances, different types and stages of arthritis, different ages, some with muscle weakness, some without. This is why patients will progress at different periods of time. What is most important is that you are walking symmetrically without a limp and without pain. Other pieces of equipment that patients often ask about are elevated toilet seats and tub seats. We encourage patients to use their standard toilets. It helps to exercise your hip and your knee by getting on and off the toilet. Often patients need the handles to push up from more than they need the elevation. The handles are not covered by insurance but are available for purchase. Commodes are often covered by insurance and can be used as an elevated toilet seat. You can also adjust the commode to the level of your toilet so that you're just using the handles. Some patients also ask about tub benches or tub seats. These are not covered by insurance. When showering, you'll be able to stand in the shower without crutches or a walker. If you do want a bench or a tub seat, we recommend that you purchase those once you return home. There are many different types on the market. It is most useful if your home physical therapist looks at your bathroom setup, observes you getting in and out of your tub or shower, and then makes a recommendation for what's best for you in your home. The other piece of equipment that's often needed is called a hip kit. When the surgeon goes in to put your total hip into place, they have to dislocate your hip. And until your tissues have a chance to tighten up and your muscles get stronger, you're at risk of that happening again. The risk is less than 1%. It's highly unlikely, but it's still something that you need to be aware of. So the hip kit includes a long-handed shoehorn, elastic shoelaces, and a reacher if you don't have enough bend in your hip to get your shoes and socks on and get dressed. You're most at risk when you're in a seated position. So when you're sitting, you want to make sure you sit with your feet together and your knees apart. The farther apart, the better. And if, think, if you're going to pick something off the floor or reach down, you always want to reach between your legs. You never ever want to reach on the outside of your hip. 
So if I drop something on the ground, like a pencil, you'd want to move the chair around so that you could reach between your legs to pick the item up. Great. You have a fresh incision. Your hip can be very sore, so it's not unusual to put more weight on the unoperated hip when you're sitting. But when you do that, you can sometimes put your hip in a compromised position as you get up. You can see that the hip rotates in because you're not sitting on that hip. Go ahead and sit back down. So when you're sit seated, you want to make sure that you have equal pressure on both of your, your right and your left hip. And you want to make sure you go straight up when you're standing up and then go straight down when you're sitting down. Great. Also, it's OK to cross your legs at your ankles. And it's OK to cross your ankle over your opposite hip on either side. This will be difficult to do, but it's OK to do. What you do not want to do is cross your legs at your thigh either way, right, or the other way. Great. For those of you having your hip replaced and going directly home, you'll see an occupational therapist while you're here. And she or he will make sure that you can get your shoes and socks on, get your pants on, and get on and off the toilet so that you're safe to go home. If you do get a hip kit, we encourage you to wean yourself off it as soon as possible because it's not really encouraging to get good flexibility out of your hip. Music